Hey everyone, how's it going? So in today's video, I am down here at a really cool spot outside of Tokyo Station, Marunouichi. That's a really nice flat area, so you can kind of guess what I'm going to be shooting today. A little bit of Flatland BMX. And what I'm going to be doing is I've gotten a hold of the new GoPro 9. So this is the new GoPro 9. It's pretty cool, a little bit bigger, a little bit heftier. You can see that uh, compared to the 8, it's a little bit tiny bit bigger, but I like it. And what I'm going to do today is see how well I can use the GoPro 9 as a stills camera for taking photos for action sports photography. Now there's a couple different ways we can use the GoPro 9 as a stills camera. And I'm gonna go through those different ways and see which one works best for myself, for how I shoot, and for the end images that we get in the end of the shoot. So yeah, cheers, stick around, and we'll go through this and see how it does. Okay, so now with the GoPro 9, we got a lot of different ways that we can shoot photos on this, like I said. And the first one I'm gonna do is just single shot with RAW. So this camera shoots RAW. The GoPros have been shooting it, be able to shoot RAW for a little while now. Um, but we can shoot raw images on this. And I think the first thing I'm gonna do is just like I have a single shot, single kill, and see what kind of an image I can get as far as timing and that sort of thing with something as fast and quick as Flatland BMX. So let's see what we can do. Okay. Timing is a little difficult. Uh, hmm, it's hard. Okay. So, you know, that was just a real quick try with shooting one shot, one kill basically with the GoPro 9. And to be honest, you know, like it's kind of hard to read the timing of when I'm going to get the shot. It seems a little bit like when I push it, there's a slight delay, which um, maybe if I work with the camera a bit more, um, that wouldn't be such a problem. But uh, at the moment, uh, I think I'm getting the shot, but then it's actually taking the photo maybe like a few milliseconds after I've pushed the button. And with something like this with the uh, Flatland BMX and it's so fast, it makes it kind of difficult. So what I'm going to do next is I can actually still shoot raw, but I can shoot a burst. And with this new camera, with the GoPro 9, I can shoot a burst of up to, uh, I think, 10 images in RAW. And so we're going to try that now and see if we can get a little bit better of an image. Because especially when, when a rider is doing these kind of spinning tricks and stuff like that, then um, a burst makes it a lot easier and you have much more chance to get the good timing on one shot. Because I don't want to sit here all day trying to figure out the timing of the GoPro for a single shot when I can just use burst mode and it's a lot quicker and a lot easier. And, you know, it's fine. I do that with my normal DSLR camera all the time too. So let's give that a try. So let's see if we get better timing on this one. Jakan, we got to top it <laughs> okay, so that was us shooting with the raw burst. And you know, um, with something like this that I'm shooting today with, like I said, Stomu, he moves really quick and the spins are very quick. The burst on raw, it seemed to do really well. You know, you get 10 shots within about a second. You know, we only tried it two or three times and with the shadow there, I think we were able to get a couple shots that I really, really liked. And you know, considering if you're out shooting with the GoPro 9 as a photo, uh, use, use this burst raw. If you really want to keep the image quality as high as you can possibly keep it and shoot raw, you can still do 10 images. So it's really not that bad. Um, and I'm looking forward to editing one or two of those images and see what they look like maybe in black and white in that. Okay, so now next, you know, if 10 images a second or so is not enough for you, then we can drop down from raw to JPEG and go up to 25 images per second. The old GoPro, GoPro 8, I think, was up to about 30 frames per second. So now that it's a 20 megapixel camera, the images on all of them, the RAW and the JPEG, are bigger. So instead of being able to take 30 frames per second, we can only do 25. Oh well, 25 is still quite a lot. So the next little mini session I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna pop down to JPEG and try shooting at 25 frames per second and just see what difference that makes. We'll have a lot more photos to choose from, for sure. Um, but I don't know if I even need to do that with what we're doing today, but let's just give it a try. Oh, 
Oh, okay. Uh huh. Hey, you guys check this out. Oh, it's so slow. This is the timing. Slow. Then I'm going to go up the mountain first. Okay. Then I'm going to the timing. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> So that was with the 25 frames per second burst mode. Now, I have to admit my timing at the beginning was a little bit off because uh, I was trying to press the button exactly when he was at the peak of the action, which is really isn't, you know, kind of what you want to do for these burst modes. So once we got the timing down a bit, then I was hitting the button as he was just about to come into the action. And then hopefully while he was going through the action, my burst goes off and I get a good timing, which it looks like we did. Uh, it's a pretty hard trick to get really good timing on because he's only up in the air and grabbing, uh, reaching for his seat for just a, like a split second. So I think, you know, these kind of tricks, uh, if it's more like really technical, really fast, uh, and you don't really know the timing very well, then popping your, your quality down from RAW to JPEG and shooting 25 frames per second is really not a bad idea in my, my book, you know, whatever helps you get the good timing and the good frame, which for action sports photography is a really uh, crucial thing. It's very important. So now next we're gonna try a little thing that maybe kind of be seen as a gimmick, but we'll see how well we can use it here. And I think it's called live burst. Um, whereas when I take the photo, it actually takes images from 1.5 seconds before I click the button and 1.5 seconds afterwards. And it also leaves me with a three second video, which I could use for social media and stuff like that. Seems neat. Um, it's kind of something that my iPhone will do, uh, the live mode, which I really, with the iPhone, I never use it. I don't like it. Um, but thinking now, like, you know, if I'm out shooting images with my friends and I'm just trying to get a cool image, but I also want a quick clip of a really quick trick, then this could be a cool little thing to play with, especially if I'm mainly gonna be popping these out to social media right away for my friends. So let's try that and see how it works out. いいけど、もうちょっとやりたいな。これ、もう一回。あ、いいと思う。で、これの中の写真はどれか使えるし。そういうことね。うんうんうん。いいんじゃない。うんうん。面白い。よし。Okay, so that was the live burst mode, and you know, it's pretty cool. It's shooting 90 frames per basically like one or two seconds. Um, they're at 12 megapixels a shot. So now we're going down a little bit in the quality, but we're getting a lot of images there, which, you know, is really good for picking out the best timing possible. And we're also getting a little clip, a three second clip that would be kind of cool for, you know, Instagram uh, stories and stuff like that. You can put a couple of them together, make a cool little 15 second clip or you could boomerang it and just have it like repeating over and over and over again. So he'd be basically spitting for infinity if you time it right. Um, and you know, it's it's kind of a, a gimmicky thing, um, but it is something that's kind of cool, uh, especially with, you know, social media and that. So I think if I'm out playing with my GoPro and there's something cool to do and to take, and I'm basically just gonna be putting that onto social media, then I would probably use this a lot um, and have some fun little clips afterwards uh, at the end of it as well to boomerang with and that. So it was cool, yeah, and I'll probably play with it again while I'm out shooting. Okay, so the, another type of uh, thing we can do here with the GoPro 9 is really something I've never done before. It's gonna be my first time trying it. And basically the GoPro 9 can now take 5K video, which is just like insane, that's so crazy. Everything I've ever used has only been ever really 1080p or uh, you know max 4K, but this thing with the 5K now. And the cool thing with that is that we can do 5K video and then take screen captures. And we're getting, I think, something like a 14 megapixel image from a screen capture, which is insane. So, you know, if you want to take the video, take the 5K video, and then go back through afterwards and pick out the best spots for a half decent image, you can do that with this camera, you know. It just takes everything. So, you can take the absolute perfect timing with the, for the photo, and you'll have a 14 megapixel photo, which, you know, it's not, in today's standards, not huge. It's not a massive photo, but from a screen capture, that's pretty good. And you can play with, like, you know, timing all you want. And you also get a 5K video out of it. So that's pretty impressive. Um, I'm interested to see what happens uh, when I try to get the image out. And you know, it's just be fun to take some 5K video. So let's try that next.
now that I've taken this 5K video, what I have to do is put the video onto my iPad, because that's what I use, and go in through the app, find the video, and uh, use the app there to get a screenshot of what I took. So, you know, it's pretty easy. I tried this morning, um, just a little test in my room, and it was super easy. It gives you a nice little uh, JPEG that you can use to edit now in the app itself, maybe throw it in a Lightroom or Photoshop or something like that. And you have whatever instance in that video you want as an image. Pretty cool. 5K does eat up your card quite a bit, um, so you can't really do it, you know, for hours and hours and hours. Um, but, you know, if you're ever shooting 5K video, for something you're gonna have extra batteries and extra cards anyways so it's really not that big of a deal uh, I think it's really kind of cool you can do this and I'll be interesting to see how you can play with this more in the future but you know you get a wicked video out of it and images as well so definitely something to try if you do have the GoPro 9. So now one other thing you can do with these GoPros is put it on uh, a tripod and basically do a time lapse of yourself doing something so myself you know I wouldn't use this really for taking photos uh, if I'm out in the field doing imagery and, and photos and that kind of stuff I just want a single photo, I really wouldn't be doing it that way. But if you're a writer or you know, a break dancer or any one of those kind of people and you want like, you know, just take photos of your session, you can stick this onto a tripod and basically take a time lapse and make sure you're saving it as photos and then go through and pick whatever photo you want to get out of that and you have an image you can use. So, you know, this is something that I've seen people doing in the Red Bull Air Race and that. They'll stick these kind of cameras on the outside of planes in the cockpits and stuff like that. And I'll see you these amazing photos of these pilots. So, you know, if you've got your camera, maybe stick it on the outside of your car on your drive and you want to get some images of you driving, it could be a really cool angle to do. And you don't, you know, it's a little bit more dangerous. Also, you know, if you want to stick your camera up at a tree, mount it somewhere and get like a, a wider shot of something, but you can't sit there and take the image every time, shoot it like a time lapse and you can take those images out afterwards. So you can be quite creative. It gives a, it helps you out when you're shooting in more dangerous or challenging locations. Now there's uh, there's options in the camera where you can set it for when you want it to start, when you want it to finish, how long you want it to record for, and things like that. And I'm not going to get into that right now because that's more like time lapse talking. So even, you know with my app, I can maybe stick it up in the in the rafters of an event hall and take images from the top of place like you know BC One, Red Bull BC One, the breakdancing, and just have it shooting a time lapse all day or even an hour if I go back up and get it. And then I can have that angle that nobody else has. Um, pretty cool. I think I might try it sometimes with remote shooting like that uh, and a Red Bull event in that. I'm not going to do it today just because, you know, the location we're at, it's not really for it. But it is something you can do and I've seen Red Bull photographers do it at events in the past, especially air race and that, because, you know, no one's going to stand out of the wing and take images all day. Uh, they, they clamp a uh, GoPro on there and they get some really amazing shots when they're out there on the plane. So, you know, dangerous situations, something you can't get up to. Try the time-lapse mode in these cameras and you can get some really cool stuff. So yeah, that was our day, uh, or a couple hours here. So yeah, thanks a lot to Stomu. Great riding. <laughs> and um, yeah, if you liked the video, hit up uh, like, subscribe, all that stuff. If you have any questions about, you know, how to use this and what it's like to shoot with it, let me know. Um, but in reality, final, you know, final kind of conclusion of shooting with this, you know, it's like a four or $500 camera that shoots 5K. I can shoot burst mode, I can shoot raw. It's literally this big. It's, you know, smaller than my iPhone, a little thicker, but still. Battery's improved from before. I can shoot, I can see what I'm shooting on this side here as well. So I can do really good selfies with this if I want. You know, afterwards, it makes it super easy to line up a selfie, uh, which is, you know, people do that all the time. It's just what we do. So in the end, you know, if, so like comparing this to my D5 is not, it's like comparing apples to, I don't know, steak. Like they're just two different things. Um, if I'm shooting action, would I rather shoot with my FD5? Sure. Sure, it's a, it's a $6,000 camera that I have $2,000 lens on. This is a $450, $500 camera. If you want to shoot action sports, shoot anything, video and photos, and you can only afford four or $500, get a GoPro. Like really, it's so versatile. The whole family of, uh, you know, um, mods and uh, what are these things called? <laughs> these little tools that you can use for them. There's so many things you can do with it. It's insane. Suction cup to a car, to a plane, get a clamp, put it on something, tripod. I can put these on top of my camera. You can do anything with these things and they're tough and durable, you know, waterproof. I would never shoot with my camera near the ocean or anything like that. I'd be worried about salt water, but this, just wash it off afterwards and you're fine. So in the end, you know, if you're on a budget, you still want to get out and be creative. Don't let that stop you. Get one of these things and push it to the max and I'm sure you're gonna get some amazing images because what it really comes down to is your timing, which with this, you know, 5K burst mode and all that, your timing is there, it's easy. Um, and then your ideas, your angle, 
what you're doing with the athlete when you're shooting, that is what's important. So awesome. Again, you know, this is a great little session. Hit me up, like the video, subscribe, do all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Ooh.